So what if you charge to 100% every day for two weeks? What happens? What's up everybody, I'm Brian from I1 Tesla and I am charging my Model Y to 100% for two weeks to see what actually happens. See if it kills the battery, see if I brick the thing. This could be a bad, this could be a really bad idea, but I got this idea because I watched uh, Like Tesla's video. She did a video about charging your model, uh, charging your Tesla and what you should do. And on the Model 3 and Y, te well, <laughs> This is the why. She spoke to an engineer there, a battery tech at Tesla, and he said charging to 90 to 95% isn't bad. In fact, uh, you should actually charge to 100% once a week if possible, and then drive it right afterwards. That balances out the battery. And she had some issues with their car because in the beginning they just charged to 70% and it calculated it really weird. Well, I've been losing range like crazy. I scrolled over on the charging app. It says 269 miles on a full charge. Now, I don't get that because of all this, and that's not what this is all about. This is not really about the range and the efficiency of this vehicle because this is not efficient. It's about the full charge on the battery, and that's what that's supposed to show. That battery is supposed to show 280, actually, is when I first picked it up. I fully charged it when I first picked it up. I, I picked it up in March earlier this year, 2020. It seems like a long time ago, well, which I guess it is. But after almost 12,000 miles, I'm already down to 269. And yes, I am probably a little tougher on my vehicle, but it shouldn't affect the overall range of the car. I go to some superchargers, but I mostly charge at home when I need to. So I get the battery low, I use it like you should, uh, at least that's what I'm thinking. So I think what I'm doing this for is to uh, maybe balance out the battery again and really see what happens at 100% for two weeks. And if it keeps getting better, I'll do it for a third week just to see what happens. Be some great data for Tesla. With that being said, today it is fully charged. It is uh, it's 1.47 in the afternoon. Uh, my wife and I are going up to uh, go out some do some Christmas shopping, so perfect timing. As soon as it fully charges, you want to drive it. You don't want to have it sit at 100% for a long time. That is bad for the battery. Charging it to 100% is not that bad. It takes a really long time to do this, but you know, hey, I got all the time in the world. So on the screen you see 270 miles. It is fully charged all the way. This is going to be the start of a two week trial. I'm gonna unplug this and we're gonna get going. All right, day two, fully charged. Just got fully charged. Day day three. Come on, buddy. There we go. Again, Again. day two. Another day. Another two hundred and seventy five hundred. Day six. Day six. Keeps giving me this. Day six. We got it. All right. So day two. Two hundred and seventy one. Two hundred and seventy one. Again, fully charged. And we're gonna say no. <laughs> fully charged. It's charged to 271 again. Day six, we dropped back down to 270, although earlier when it stopped, it's been sitting for a little bit at 270. Uh, it did go to 271. So really no change so far. Early in the morning, 271, fully charged, ready to go. 272, full charge. So we're doing something right. This is day seven, I think it is. This sat at a 30 minute window for a long time and we're at 272 again. Now it didn't ask me this time if I wanted to, uh, that I was gonna be harming the battery, so weird. All right, well, I'm at the V3 supercharger. I decided to let it go 100% at the supercharger. Not recommended to do. We are fully charged here. We dropped some, quite a bit. Down to 270. Maybe we'll pick that back up. Uh-oh. 270 we're going backwards i think it was 271 a little bit ago when the app told me hey hey that popped up again that hasn't been there the last couple times we're gonna hit no and it was at 271 all right day 13 almost done we have till tomorrow and just like yesterday it's 270 but it said 271 on the app i should have taken a picture of it but it was 271 no well there it goes just went up to 271. Day 14, we made it. Last day of fully charging. I might actually do this a little bit longer because some video plans uh, came up and I'm not gonna be posting this video when I wanted to. So I may do an extra couple days because I'm excited. 273, it popped back up to 273 fully charged. Woohoo, 273. It didn't say anything about charging to 100% again. Another day, another 100%. This is day 15 actually. Uh-oh. 
that's back and we're down to 270. Man, that sucks. By the way, did you see that video? Day number 16, fully charged. I did look at the app and it said 272 inside. Uh, interesting to see that it's down to 270. It is very cold right now. It's 39 degrees, but I guess it's not really cold, but it's been really cold. So I wonder if that has an effect with the battery. Plus it sat at 100% for a little bit. So 272, I think we're in the same, I think we're going up a little bit. In any case, I'm not gonna let it sit like this any longer. I'm gonna head out and drive it to get it off of 100%. Did I ruin my car? Does my car still work? Well, yes, yes it does. And you can actually see from the graph here, it fluctuated and we were actually trending up pretty good. We started at 269 miles on a full battery. It should be right around the 290, well, 280 when I picked it up and they've increased it. I really never got an increase. I think the highest I got was 283. I do go down quite far on the battery pack on these trips. And you know, now I'm using a lot more power because of the stuff on my vehicle, but that doesn't affect the what the max range is from what the computer says, the capacity of the battery. It, this is all about the capacity of what the battery can take inside. So it's this isn't the range, it's nothing to do with range, it's just about the capacity of the battery. Uh, again, here's the graph. You can see we started low and we got up to 272. From charging at home, we got to 272. It was on the increase and I was so excited. You know, it would fluctuate from time to time. Uh, and sitting in the car once that said fully charged, I would see sometimes 272. And then by the time I got to the car, I would say 271. So I think there's a one mile fluctuation there, but it kind of went downhill after I took my trip to Atlanta. I went to Atlanta for the world record uh, Tesla drive. I'll have a link right up there if you wanna watch that. That was my whole trip down there and the watt hour per mile that this vehicle actually gets. But supercharging, I think, affected the battery more. You're pushing so much energy in so fast, whether it be V2 or V3, because I went to both of them, but I supercharged five different times on that trip. But when I got down to Atlanta, I was at 10% battery and I fully charged at a V3 supercharger from 10% to 100%. And it took a long time, very long time. The top half of the battery isn't much faster than what you'd be charging at home. You think of a battery pack as like a glass of water. When it's empty, you can pour in the water really fast, but as it gets halfway full or really close to the top, you're gonna slow down and slowly drip that water in there. And that's how you charge the battery as well. And that's why it takes longer to charge that last third or last 25% of the battery. But right after I fully charged it on the supercharger, the next morning, it dropped down to 270. My assumption is the super supercharging is not good for your car. And I think we kind of know that. But then once I got home, you could see on the graph, charging at home slowly increased the battery. Although it did bounce a couple times because we, we went from 273 at home, that was the highest I saw. So an increase of four, which is really good. And then the next day it dropped to 270 and then it went back up to 272. So it fluctuated a little bit. I think I was conf confusing the BMS, the battery management system. I think I was confusing that a little bit, charging it so much. That notification when you, get, when you charge over 90%, that didn't happen every single time. It only happened probably probably didn't happen a handful of times out of the 16 times. So at this point, I'm gonna let my battery relax. I'm not gonna charge it to 100% right for the next two weeks, I'm gonna wait till after Christmas. And then I'm gonna to go to a schedule of charging it to 100% once a week. I wanna use the battery pack, not stress it out, but then I want to once a week charge it to 100%. I really think the battery pack needs to be pushed and stretched a little bit to know where the top of the battery pack is so the computer understands where it can be and I think that's for the long-term health of it. So I'm gonna charge the car to 90%, not every day, but when I need to, charge it to 90%, and then once a week, charge it to that 100%. And then drive it right away. Again, you have to drive it right after you charge it to 100%. Do I think I harmed the battery at all? I don't think I harmed the battery because I, I believe, I don't think it's known yet, but I believe that Tesla has a 5% buffer on the top and the bottom of the batteries. So really when we charge to 100%, I really think it's 95%. Same thing at the bottom. I still think we have a little bit. Maybe it's 3% that they save there, but I don't think it's fully, fully charged when you do that. So what did we learn from this? Well, first of all, we learned that supercharging isn't as good for your car as charging at home. We also learned that 100% charging your battery isn't really that bad for it. I mean, I did it 16 days straight and you really shouldn't do that. I don't, I don't think you really should do that. Don't try this stuff at home. We also learned that 
I think V3 supercharging is even worse for your battery pack. Yeah, I think if you use the superchargers just like you sh really should on a long trip, charge enough to get to the next supercharger because that's where you charge it fast, just like the, the water thing. Um, you don't need to charge to here if you can use that much power to get to the next supercharger. So you just charge to here, that's 15, 20 minutes, and then you jump to the next one instead of an hour and 20 minutes. We also learned that we can positively affect the battery by showing it where the battery, the top of the pack is. I do understand that there's not little creatures in there that are understanding, that are taking information. It's the computer really being pushed a little bit to, to know that uh, where the top of the pack is. The biggest takeaway from this is don't be scared to charge your car fully, either 95% or 100%. Don't be scared to do that. You know, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about Tesla that you don't want to fully charge it ever. And I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, obviously it's not the case. Uh, it's just use your car, use your car if you have to. I mean, some places, sometimes you do have to charge it fully to get to some superchargers. On my trip out west to the Cybertruck event, I had to supercharge fully just to make it to a couple superchargers because uh, one was broken and you, you do want to have a buffer there. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions in the comments about my warranty. Did I affect my warranty? I don't think I affected my warranty, even though that thing popped up multiple times. It didn't pop up every time, but Tesla has an eight year, 120,000 mile warranty on my battery pack because I have the long range. Tesla's warranty guarantees 70% battery at the end of the eight years. I'm way away from the 70%. Even if it, even to start at 269, I'm way away from the 70% battery. 70% of 290 is what it's supposed to be. I think that's right around 200, 205 uh, miles. Someone can put the exact number down there. 205 miles versus 269. There's a big range there. There's a huge range. So if I got down to 200 miles, obviously there's something wrong with the battery pack and Tesla will replace that battery pack within those eight years or 120,000 miles. So I'm not concerned about it. Am I keeping the car that long? Probably not. So again, I don't recommend you try this at home. I don't want anybody to affect their battery negatively and I'm not responsible for if you do anything like that. So don't sue me. Watch as I do, but don't do as I do. Something like that. <laughs> But I had fun with this experiment. I was really hoping I can get this battery pack up to 280. And I think I may have if I didn't have that trip in there because we were trending that way. Uh, and if you see, if you, if you look at the graph, if you just take out that section, I think we would have been close. I think we would have got this up to 270, 276, 277 maybe. And that would have been really cool. If you thought it was a cool idea, uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you thought I was, uh, and if you think I'm stupid for doing this, you think I'm ruining my car, uh, you definitely need to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned because I got a lot more videos. Maybe not destroying my car, but I got some uh, really cool videos planned for the future. 2021 is going to be an awesome year for, for this channel and uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome, stay positive, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.